everybody. Uh, almost got a little look at the black ghost knife fish I have in this tank. This is my African tank. This is my pseudo African tank. This is not a true biotope. None of my tanks are. And I just did a bunch of work in here today. I got it all cleaned up. Looking nice and pretty, so I thought I would sit here and shoot some video while I'm enjoying it. I've had quite a few people ask me about this tank or about the fish in it specifically. Um, chiefly the Tenopoma here and my Cynodontus yipteris or the African Featherfin Squeaker who is hiding in his cave right now and I'm really surprised he's not out and about since I just fed the tank. So I've had some people ask me about care parameters and so on and so forth uh, between the Tenopoma and my Cynodontus who is sort of making an appearance now. So if you're not familiar with my videos, I don't do species profile type videos. There's enough of that stuff out there available. You can go on Fish Base or Planet Catfish or any one of a dozen uh, sites and you can find all the care parameters and how big they get and all that kind of stuff. Um, what I can tell you is what it is like owning them and my experiences with them. I know when I was getting started fish keeping, uh, YouTube was a valuable resource for me, not only for information, um, but just for visual appeal. I just wanted to see what these fish looked like and how they moved and how they interacted with other fish. Um, I had a lot of different questions that you just don't get answered with the species profile type pages. Uh, fish personality and things like that tend to be very vague and generic. Um, so with my Tonopoma, I will say that he's a really cool fish. Um, I don't know if this is the norm, but this one here is fairly outgoing. He's kind of skittish, but he's not shy, if that makes sense. Um, sudden movements, stuff like that will startle him, but then he will come right back out. And I'm using the word him arbitrarily here. Uh, I do not know the gender of the animal. So he's not aggressive, he does not seem to be territorial in any way, uh, but it will eat anything it can fit in its mouth as far as I can tell. It's a, it's a really simple fish to eat. He prefers floating pellets or, you know, floating anything really. And But it will eat right off the bottom, it will eat algae wafer, uh, sinking tablets, shrimp pellets. Uh, it will certainly eat any fish that it can fit in its mouth and it's got a very large mouth. So I would not house it with anything uh, fairly small. I used to have a uh, CPO, a dwarf crayfish in here, and when it was much smaller than you see now, this thing absolutely destroyed that crayfish. Um, it hit it so hard it actually tore the carapace right off the back and it sucked the meat out of the inside of it and just left the shell there um, all in one shot. So definitely not the fish for every tank they get fairly large this one's not even a year old and I don't know if you get a really good scale uh, size on him this is a 40 gallon breeder um, he's about four and a half inches long and they're supposed to get about six and when I say four and a half inches long I'm including the tail and everything so I don't know what they mean by six whether that's the body or the tail or what but for not even a year old, he's a pretty big beefy fish and I would imagine he's going to be uh, quite the large specimen when he's finished growing out. Fantastic fish though, tons of personality, very intelligent. Um, I like that in a fish, I like a really intelligent, curious fish and he sure is. Uh, they are labyrinth fish, they are related to gouramis but they are not actually gouramis. One of their common names is usually uh, the leopard gourami or leopard bush fish. Uh, but it is not technically a gourami. I can never remember the name of uh, what those kinds of fish are. Oh, I didn't even notice my uh, black ghost knife fish is out a little bit there. Now that's one I don't get to see too often. And he's getting really big too. That's uh, growing a lot faster than I expected it to. Uh, another fish that is not actually an African fish. Uh, like my gouramis. But a really neat fish. This is probably my favorite tank. I've got some really cool fish in this tank. And 
and he is probably the coolest but I hardly ever get to see him this is like the most I've seen of him in two weeks or so and that might be it he may just now be in that cave for the rest of the night or he may pop out and appear pretty much anywhere so you can see that little guy is an otosynclus catfish I have a few of them in here that is another South American fish um, and I've also got a couple of uh, dwarf African called frogs in here so my Cynodontus, who is being very shy tonight for some reason, is super easy to care for. Again, it's a catfish, will eat pretty much anything. Um, like all the cynos, or at least all of them in my opinion, they need a fairly high amount of vegetable material in their diet. So he always loves it when I throw my uh, algae wafers in there for him. Which again, I'm really just surprised he's not out and about. So I will talk more about Cynodontis when we can actually see the Cynodontis. Um, the snakeskin gouramis are fantastic. They do get fairly large, so I would not recommend them in anything smaller than a 40 breeder or a 40 long. They get about 9 inches probably, the males do. So we shall see whether or not they're going to be able to spend their life in this tank or not. Uh, once again, my catfish is being very shy tonight. It's very unusual. I'm not sure why. Maybe all the water changing and being in there scrubbing and all that. That was just a couple hours ago. Maybe he's still a little rattled up. And uh, I also added that new um, smaller tetra in here today. I had uh, three males and three females, and one of my males died recently. So I've been growing one out in a quarantine tank. And just today during my water change, I added him in. And so who knows, maybe the catfish is aware that there's another fish in the tank and after all the water change and everything, maybe he's just a little disturbed. So while the tank looks pretty, maybe tonight wasn't the best night to actually film it. And as usual, he makes a liar out of me as soon as I say it. So this is another one that I absolutely love. He gets about, I'm going to say 7 to 8 inches long. Again, it just depends on where you look. I have had him for about a year now and not including the tail he's probably about four to four and a half inches he's pretty beefy his belly's starting to round out um, and from my experience with um, other fish once the belly starts rounding out that's a pretty good indication that the uh, lengthening is going to slow down dramatically so he's probably not going to get a whole lot longer as he gets older but he's going to definitely get uh, thicker and beefier so the biomass will increase even though his length does not. So I am going to call that a video. This is pretty much where my Tenopoma usually sleeps. He hunkers down in that corner there and just kind of points his nose down and lies on the side. And then of course you've seen where my Cynodontis sleeps in his cave. And then once the um, Tetra settle down for the evening. They'll go down low towards the bottom and they'll just sort of hide in the bushes and lay low like most Tetras do uh, after the lights go out. So a nice relaxed chilled out tank just the way I like them. And there's a lot of subtle uh, color and subtle beauty in there which is another thing I like about tanks or at least my tanks anyway. So I hope you enjoyed this look at my African tank. I'd ask you to please subscribe, please like my videos. And stay tuned as usual, there will be plenty more to come.